Okay, another model steam engine. This is an Mammoth ME1 Marine model steam engine. Well, at least it's about 60% of an ME1, and we'll get onto that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to pick this one up. Having just recently acquired the ME3, it was really nice to be able to pick up an ME1. Now, these are a little bit difficult to date because Mammoth first started to produce this version of the ME1 in 1958 and I believe they kept making them all the way up until 1972 something like that early 70s so yeah it's a little bit difficult to uh, to date unfortunately it's in pretty rough condition as you can see the uh, the base is very badly rusted it's quite dirty there's there's a slight bend in the prop shaft uh, but there's nothing that really can't be fixed but um no the reason I said it's about 60% of a mammoth ME1 is because the boiler is not correct. Someone has replaced the original marine steam engine boiler with this boiler, which is from, I think, an early uh, SE1 or SE2 stationary Mambert engine. I'm fairly certain it's early because it's got the large diameter safety valve, uh, and that tends to indicate that this, this boiler comes from an early Mambert. But it's very definitely not the marine boiler and I will show you what it should look like because fortunately we have an ME3 which has almost exactly the same boiler as, as the ME1 should have. So here you can see the ME3 boiler. I've taken the shroud off because the ME1 should also have a similar, that, this is the shroud that sits over the boiler and the ME1 should have a similar shroud which is missing but that's easy enough to make oh, this original one is a chrome plated uh, steel but I will make one out of stainless for the for the ME1 however you can see the differences in the boiler you know very clearly the marine boilers on the Mammoth marine engines they did they were very very plain they simply had a, a raised turret which you screw the safety valve in and the I'll turn it around and the steam pipe comes out the other side of that turret there to feed the engine. The early, uh, the earlier ones um, of the ME ones, they had a level plug like this, which is offset. The later ones of the ME one, they had a sight glass. But as you can see, it's very definitely not the right boiler. As I said, it should be uh, pretty much identical to this to this one. So, yeah. <clears throat> that's a bit of a shame. I don't know why it was changed. Um, looking at the fireboxes, this is more or less identical to this one, so I'm fairly certain that's the right firebox, and probably even the right strap as well. But but obviously the two boilers, you know, they're they're, they're very different. So um, that's a shame. But it's not insurmountable. What I'm hoping to do is uh, the marine boiler is very slightly longer than the SE one or two boiler here. But other than that, it, it, it's very similar. So what, I'm, what I thought I could do is, if I was to remove the chimney, uh, cap off the, this boiler feed, the steam feed pipe here, then simply machine up a turret like that to screw into there that I can screw the safety valve in and drill a hole in it to take the steam pick off and then just turn the boiler around. So that would, I would then end up with something which looks very similar to this. And, and would certainly be more appropriate to the ME1 than the one that's on there. So I think that's probably what we'll do. But apart from that, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's dirty and it's grubby, but it, it, it is free, it does turn. It's a bit stiff because like I said, there is a slight bend in the prop shaft, well, which we can, we can straighten that out. Um, and obviously the base needs, and firebox, they need some serious attention. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 it, apart from that, it's 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 not a bad example of a, of a of an ME an ME one a Mammoth ME one. Ah, <laughs> strip down time. So hopefully this won't be too much of a problem. There's not an awful lot to it. Let's see if we can get the. Uh... Oh, that is that's tight. We need to get that to loosen that off. I think. Always useful to have some box spanners. <laughs> Don't see these much anymore, but they are very, very useful in certain situations, and uh, I think this is going to be one of them. So we're going to try that on the little nut that's on the the cylinder retaining pin. Ah, there we go. So it hasn't it hasn't loosened the nut off, but we have got the pin out. So 
There's the uh, cylinder. Bit, bit mucky, but um, okay. Small end doesn't look too worn, which is always a good sign. Uh, let's have a look. I think there's a uh, retaining grub screw <coughs> on the... Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, my, my, my stand isn't quite big enough, so I'll move it this way a little bit. There we go. I can turn the uh, flywheel around and get... <coughs> right, there we go. Ooh. Brass flywheel. Now, I wonder if that if this will come out. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. Uh, that came out easy enough. Very dry though. Uh, let's put that in. Yeah, yeah it's very dry. <clears throat> B. On on the engine frame here, there is a hole here, and the idea is that this um, you put oil in here. And it goes down to this felt pad, which believe it or not is still there, the felt pad. Let me move it around so you can see a bit better. Um, <coughs> I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a, there is a felt pad in there. That's a, there we go. Ooh. There. Ooh. Yeah, little felt pad, oiler pad. There's also, there's also supposed to be a groove uh, in the engine casting, which allows oil to go down to the prop shaft, to all that. So, yeah, not quite sure whether that's working or not, but hopefully, I mean, I'm gonna have to take, I'm gonna have to unsolder all the pipe work anyway, because I've got to, to straighten it out and, you know, basically put it where it's supposed to be. And um, so we're gonna need to get a torch on the steam pipe now to get to get that off. That's uh, that's soldered in place. So let's go and get a torch. Right. Let's see what kind of a solder has been used on here. Fairly soft solder by the looks of it. Come on. We might have to upgrade our torch a little bit for this. Ah, there we go. So that's that, that's that out, excellent. All right, so I think we'll have a go at the, uh, the boiler strap next. There's a little tiny nuts underneath there holding that in place, so we'll give those a go. That wasn't too much of a fight. It's always nice when that happens. Try the other one. These screws are gonna need to be replaced. I think they're only 6BA. Oh yes, it's a, that's a bit unpleasant under there. Uh, there we go. Right. Yeah, it's not it's, it's not too bad. This obviously hasn't been run in a 
in it in a very long time. So underneath, there you go. So yeah, cast that off, Fireboxes, fairly rusty, but that's, you know, par for the course with those. The uh, boiler strap's not in too bad condition, so. Now I don't know whether or not this is actually, whether the prop shaft tunnel is actually fixed in here or whether we can remove it. So I'll take the screws out of the bottom of the engine mount and see what happens. Well, fortunately, it looks like the prop shaft isn't um, <coughs> fixed in place. What is interesting, I've only just noticed, but there is an extra pair of holes here. So it's almost like there is two positions that you can mount the engine frame in. Uh, and it will obviously, you know, allow you to move it backwards and forwards. So anyway, this should come out with a bit of luck, a bit of wiggling. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I think you can clearly see the bend in the prop shaft tunnel there. Oh, we should be able to straighten that out fairly easily. Um, the engine frame is a bit, well, grubby, but it's in pretty good condition otherwise. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Apart from unsoldering the pipes, we're, we're, um, we're pretty much done. I don't know whether we can detach the prop shaft from, from when that, or is that, it looks like it's fixed in there quite tightly, we'll see. Uh, hopefully we can. Anyway, got it all stripped down. Well, here it is all stripped down. The, um, it was fairly easy to get the uh, steam pipes off. They were only, uh, it was only soft soldered, so that's okay. And although the prop shaft itself has got a small bend in it, the actual, the outer part of the prop shaft is bent, the actual inner part is not. And the prop shaft tube is a lot bigger than the actual prop shaft itself. It goes into a bushing at this end. So um, we don't need to straighten that. That's actually fine. So yeah, quite uh, quite pleased about that. Right. So it just needs a real good clean up. I mean, the first thing I'm gonna do is stick the, the boiler in the firebox in a vinegar bath, and get rid of the rust and clean those up. And I need to find something big enough to put the base in as well. That needs a, a soak. And then just clean everything up, anneal the, the, the steam pipes, get them straightened out, softened up, and as I say, just clean everything up really and uh, take it from there.